Hello and welcome to this transmitter programming tutorial for the AeroScout S2 1.1. We will be programming this DX6E. This programming is also applicable for all Spectrum DX radios. Start by selecting a new model on the transmitter. To select a new model, click the scroll wheel and scroll all the way down to System Setup. Click, and we'll see a warning letting us know that by entering system setup, the RF deck will be turned off. Go ahead and click yes. And we see the light on the transmitter has gone out, indicating that there's no signal being transmitted. Scroll one down to model select and click. And scroll down to add new model and click. Scroll to create, click. And there we have a brand new model. We can name this model by going down to model name and just click on the very first number or letter in the first column there to start naming your aircraft. Now we've got our model named. Push the back button. And it'll take us back to the main menu. Now that we've got our model named, let's start setting up our dual rates. High rates allow for full deflection of the aircraft surfaces, allowing for the most maneuverability. Low rates will decrease the throw of the aircraft surfaces. Low rates can make the aircraft easier to fly and help prevent overcorrecting. Click the scroll wheel and scroll down to DR and Expo to set up dual rates. We can see the channel selected is already on aileron and the rates are at 100%. When our dual rate switch is in the zero position, we want it to be at 100%, giving us our high rates. Let's start by choosing a switch. Scroll down to where it says switch on and click. Scroll to the right to select a switch to be your dual rate switch. I'll be using the C switch. With the C switch now in the zero position, we can see high rates are at 100%, just where we want them. Flip the C switch down to the one position, scroll up to the rates, click, and now let's bring the 100s down to 70 by scrolling left. Once they're at 70, click to lock in. And now when we flip our C switch, when we go back to zero, we see them the rates flip back to 100. When we flip down to one, we see the aileron rates flip down to 70. Now let's do the same on the elevator and rudder channel. Scroll up to where it says channel aileron and click. Scroll to the right, and there we have elevator. Now scroll down to switch and change that to the C switch, just like our aileron channel. And flip the switch down to one. Scroll up to the dual rate numbers. Click. Let's bring them down to 70 for our low rate for the elevator channel. And when we flip the switch, we can see that working as it should. Now scroll up to elevator and we'll do the same thing for our rudder channel. All right, now we have all three of our surfaces set up with dual rates. So when our C-switch is in the zero position, we have high rates, giving us full maneuverability and control of the aircraft. Flip down to the one position, and we have low rates, where the surface deflection is decreased, which will help us prevent from oversteering or overcorrecting. Now let's push the back button 
Take us back to the function list. Now let's scroll down to throttle cut. Throttle cut is very easy to set up, but is also extremely important. Scroll down to inhibit and click on inhibit. Scroll to the right to select a switch to use for your throttle cut. The H switch is most commonly used for throttle cut, and that's what we will be using today. We can see when we select a switch, it automatically sets the throttle cut to negative 100%, and that is just perfect. With our throttle cut off, when we move the throttle stick, we can see the throttle channel respond. With our throttle cut flipped on, the throttle channel is now stuck at negative 100% and will not move even if we move the throttle stick. This will help prevent an unintentional throttle up if you accidentally bump the throttle stick. Now that our throttle cut is set up, push the back button to return to the function list. Now, let's set up the switch that controls safe. Let's scroll down again near the bottom to system setup, click, Click yes, and now scroll down to channel assign. Click here at channel input configuration. We can assign our switches to the channels indicated by the manual. It indicates the B switch should operate the gear channel. This will control the safe operation in this airplane. It also states that the auxiliary one channel should be changed to the I button. This will control the panic mode for the aircraft. We'll first scroll down to gear and click on the A. We'll change that A to B. Now the B switch will control the gear channel. Now we'll scroll down to auxiliary one and click on the D and we'll change that to the letter I. Now we have the aircraft's safe function being controlled by the gear channel on the B switch. And the panic function controlled by the auxiliary one channel on the I button. Now we can push the back button twice to return to the home screen. And now our transmitter is fully programmed and ready to fly the AeroScout S2 1.1 meter. Hello and welcome to this transmitter programming tutorial for the AeroScout S2 1.1 meter. Today we'll be using this NX10 transmitter, but this programming will be applicable for all NX transmitters. Let's start by selecting a brand new model. Click the scroll wheel and scroll down all the way to System Setup. Click. This gives you a warning that when entering this menu, the RF deck will be disabled, meaning there will be no signal being transmitted. Scroll down to Yes, and we can see the light on the center shut off, indicating the transmitter is not sending out a signal. Now scroll to Model Select. Click. And scroll down to Add new model. And scroll down to create and click. And there we have a brand new model set up on the transmitter. Let's start by naming our model. Scroll the model name. Now scroll down to the name we have there. The default here was number four acro. Click on that. And I'm going to change it to Aero Scout. Once the name is set, push the back button to take you back to the system setup screen. And now we can go to channel assign to assign our safe switch and panic button. Per the manual, the gear channel should be operated by the B switch, and this will be our safe mode switch. Scroll down to gear, click and change it to B. The AUX1 channel controls the panic function. That should be controlled by the I button. 
Scroll down to Auxiliary 1, click on the D, and change that to an I. With this set, the Safe Mode switch and Panic button should function properly. Push the Back button to go back to the System Setup menu, and push once more to go to the Home screen. Now we'll click the scroll wheel and scroll down to DR and Expo. This is where we can set up our dual rates for the aircraft. Dual rates allow for a high and low set of rates for our surfaces. High rates will allow for full deflection on the aircraft, allowing for the most maneuverability. Low rates decrease the available deflection of the surfaces, often providing an easier flying experience and much more forgiving for overcorrecting. We can see the aileron channel is already selected. Now we just need to scroll down to switch and choose a switch to control our dual rates. I'll be using the C switch to control the dual rates for this aircraft. When the C switch is in the zero position, we want to leave our rates at 100%, allowing for full travel in that position. Flip the C switch to the one position. Now we can scroll up to the 100% rates, click, and scroll to the left to bring them down to 70%. When we flip the switch back to zero, we'll see those numbers revert back to 100. Now we'll do the same for the elevator and rudder channels. Scroll up to where it says Channel Aileron and click Aileron. Scroll right to change it to Elevator. Now we'll go down to Switch. And we will also put that on the C switch. Flip the C switch down to the one position. And now I'll go to the 100% and bring them down to 70. Flip the switch to see that's working properly. And now I'll do the same for the rudder. Click on elevator, scroll to the right, rudder channel, lock it in. Now I'll scroll down to switch, set it to the C switch, flip the C switch to the one position, and now I'll set the rates to the 70% low rates. Now our low rates are set. Push the back button to go back to the function list. And now finally, we'll set up our throttle cut. Scroll down to throttle cut and click. The throttle cut switch is incredibly important as it can help reduce the possibility of an accidental motor spin up. Scroll down to where it says inhibit and click. Now scroll to the right to choose a switch to control your throttle cut. The H switch is most commonly used for throttle cut, and that's the switch I'll be using. When the throttle cut is off, we can see the throttle channel responds to the throttle stick. When we flip throttle cut on, there's no longer any control that the throttle stick has over the throttle channel. It will remain at negative 100%. This is a very important safety feature when out at the field or working on the aircraft as it can help prevent an accidental throttle up. Now that our throttle cut's set, push the back button twice to return to the home screen. Thank you for joining me in this tutorial. Our transmitter is now set up and ready to fly. Hello and welcome to this programming tutorial for the AeroScout S2 1.1 meter. Today I'll be using an IX-14 but this programming is applicable for all IX radios. Let's start by selecting a new model. Click the top left-hand corner. This warning tells us that by proceeding to the next menu, our RF deck will be turned off, meaning the transmitter will not be sending out a signal. Click the three dots at the top right-hand corner and select Add New Model. Select Default and Airplane. Create. Now we have our new Acro model set up. Click the arrow next to it, and we can give it a name.
Now we've got the name of our model punched in. Push the back button and back once again. Now click Model Adjust and we'll start by setting up our throttle cut. Let's first select a throttle cut switch. Click on Inhibit and choose a switch to act as your throttle cut. The H switch is most commonly used as a throttle cut and that's the switch I'll be using. We can see that with the throttle cut off, the throttle channel responds to the stick as it should. When we flip the throttle cut on, it disables our throttle cut, keeping it locked at negative 100%, even if we bump the throttle. This is a very important safety feature when out at the field or when working on the aircraft. If you were to accidentally bump the throttle stick, your throttle cut will save you from an accidental motor spool up. Now that our throttle cut is set up, click the back button, back to model adjust, and now click on dual rates and expo to set up our dual rates. We can see the channel already selected is the aileron channel. We need to select a switch to operate our dual rates. Click where it says on in the switch column to choose a switch. I'll be using the C switch. When the C switch is in the zero position, we want to see the 100% rates. Flip the C switch to the one position, and now we can change those rates to 70. And click OK. Now, when we flip our C switch back to zero, we see we get our 100% rates. And when we flip back to one, we get our low rates of 70%. Now let's do the same for our elevator and rudder channel. Select the switch, same switch. Flip that switch to the one position. Now bring the rates down to 70. And verify it works. And now we'll finally do the rudder channel. Now that we've got our dual rates set up, we'll push the back button back to the model adjust menu and back again to take us to our home screen. Now let's set up our safe switch and panic button. Click model setup and then channel assign. Proceed. Per the manual, the gear channel operates the safe switch and should be set on the B switch. So we'll change gear from switch A to switch B. Now channel 6 or AUX1 controls the panic button. We'll change that from switch D to switch I. Now we have our safe switch and our panic button set. Push back to take us back to the main menu. Now our IX-14 is programmed and ready to fly the AeroScout S2. Thank you for joining me in this tutorial.